the estuary is, to me, it's a vital part of life. You know, it's kind of like storytelling. The, the marine water wants to bring in the resources that it has. The fresh water wants to um, bring down what it's created. And when they mix, it's in that brackish area where things thrive and, and die and, and create new life. So an estuary is a place where the river meets the sea. And they're extremely productive places. And humans know this. If you think about almost any major city, they are built on an estuary. And that's worldwide. The cradle of civilization, the Fertile Crescent, all estuaries. So they're fascinating places to study. Estuaries provide us with so many benefits. They help improve water quality. They provide key habitat for so many important species that we fish for, that we eat. They also protect our shorelines from storms and flooding. And on top of that, we're now realizing that they're also great carbon sinks. We call it blue carbon simply because it's carbon that's associated with coastal systems. Uh, so it's water. The blue comes from water. So blue carbon is the carbon that is captured, stored, and released from coastal and marine habitats. Both forests and wetlands can store carbon, uh, and they're both good at it. But wetlands are better for a couple of reasons. One is that where's that carbon coming from that's in the soils? It's coming mostly from plants that are growing. and and wetlands are extremely productive systems. It's a boy. <laughs> so that's one good thing. Another good thing is there's no oxygen down there in the soils. So that organic matter doesn't decompose very rapidly. So once it's there, it's stored. Another thing is that wetlands just build up soil fairly rapidly as well. In a, in a healthy wetland, you can, you can add a centimeter or so a year, an inch in just five years or so, so you can really bury, you're burying a lot of carbon. So basically, we are realizing that these wetlands are so good at capturing and storing carbon, but we really wanted to know, well, how much carbon is in an estuary and how much carbon is captured through estuary restoration? Of, of climate mitigation is keeping the carbon that is in the wetlands there now. And then on the other side of it is restoring wetlands where we can to bring carbon back where it used to be. Snohomish County in the Snohomish watershed is a really interesting one because there's so many different projects happening within the region. Um, so, you know, so it's not just this you know, one restoration site happening within a vacuum. The whole watershed is having restoration done. Today we're out sampling for juvenile salmonids in the Snohomish estuary. So, every salmon that comes up the Snohomish River has to come through this estuary at least twice in its life. And so this habitat is extremely important for them. And as we restore more and more of this estuary. We want to see how those populations, especially how the juveniles react to that restoration. You never go into a wetland and just restore one, one benefit. It benefits the salmon, it benefits the water quality, it benefits the people inland who are now protected from a storm surge. So there's multiple benefits that accrue. You don't even have to think about blue carbon storage. You could be restoring a wetland to restore salmon habitat, and you're going to increase blue carbon. To me, the big message is that these habitats provide so many benefits. I mean, it's really kind of crazy to think about how many benefits they provide for us. And we're also making a difference in helping to address climate change because these habitats are also capturing that carbon and storing it. 
to me, that's uh, the fun part, is when you can sort out how, how things function and, and get them to grow, and you watch it grow, that's, uh, that makes you just feel good. <laughs>